Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Zero One AI has released G Coder 9 billion chat and this model has shown some real promising evaluations and performance on some of the benchmarks. In this video, we are going to install it locally and then we will see how much that is true. I have been covering these G models for a few months or maybe an year now and if you're interested, you can search out these models, I think I have covered almost all of them from different angles, as you can see here, and there are a lot of them. So go ahead and check them out if you're interested to see how the previous ones were performing. But for this one, we are going to look at this coding model. And previously they were releasing these models quite frequently, but I see that now the frequency has reduced anyway. Um, another fun fact is that the model's name. I'm always curious about these models and naming. So for example, this word G, um, it is pronounced as G in Cantonese, but in Mandarin Chinese, it is pronounced as E. And the meaning of it is quite uh, diverse. For example, normally it is used for one or unity. So you see that the company's name is also zero one. So maybe it relates to that. It is the Chinese word for number one, uh, but I have seen it appearing in some of the uh, Confucius and Tao code. So maybe it also relates to that. And in that, I think it means some integrity and that sort of stuff. But all in all, pretty interesting um, pick for a model's name looks quite cool. So coming back to this model, so Gcoder is a series of open source code language models that deliver SOTA performance with fewer than 10 billion parameters. And they also come in 1.5 billion parameter a model if you're interested in a smallish model. But I will be going with this 9 billion to see how it works. And I will be using the VM and GPU sponsored by Mast Compute. If you're also looking to get a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs, so do check them out. Now, this model supports 52 major programming languages, which include Java, Python, PHP, C, C Sharp, TypeScript, HTML, Go, Dart, Kotlin, Ruby, CSS, and Visual Basic, Pascal, Fortran, and surprisingly, Haskell. So Haskell is um, a language which is behind the smart contracts in the Cardano uh, crypto, which I bought around four years ago, never recovered. So <laughs> anyway, sorry, I digress. And there are a lot of other languages, including PowerShell, and we will be testing this model out on a um, few of these languages to see how it works. So I'm not going to stick with only Python and JavaScript, but we will be looking at the other languages in this one. There are a lot of other details around benchmarking and stuff on their model card. So I'm not going to go into that detail. I will just drop the link to it in video's description. So let's try to get it installed. So this is my Ubuntu system and this is my GPU card. NVIDIA RTX is 6000. Let me clear the screen. Let me create a virtual environment here. I'm just calling it she. Let's wait for it to get activated. Now let's install our prerequisites. So I'm just going to install Transformers, Accelerate and Torch. Let's wait for it. Okay, so you can see that all the prerequisites are done. Let me clear the screen. Next up, let me launch the Jupyter Notebook here. So my Jupyter Notebook is launched. Next up, let's import the libraries and download the model and its tokenizer. And the model is being downloaded. As you can see, there are four shards of it. So let's wait for it to finish downloading. And the model and the tokenizer are loaded. Let's do the inference on it. So first up, I'm just asking it to write a quick sort algo. We are creating the prompt template, applying the chat template on that prompt. And from there, we are converting it into tokens, generating the model's output and then decoding it back and then printing it out. So let me run it. So if you look at this prompt, I have just asked it to write an algorithm. That's it. I haven't specified any language. Let's see what is the default language it has. I think it's Python, but let's check. 
and there you go it has produced the response so you see it starts with quick sort is a divide and conquer problem it picks an element as pivot and partitions a given array around the pick pivot so so it has given us a definition of what exactly that is and then there you go so it's a quick sort and then it is giving us the synopsis of the code very very nice i think very nice very well written let's try out another one now let's start specifying the languages so first up i'm just going to try the powershell script and i'm asking it to give the list of all running processes sorted by memory usage so let's see what it comes up with and there you go it has given us a powershell script which is uh, giving us this is a commandlet which it has produced sort of the object property memory use it looks good and then it is also um, i think self-corrected itself it seems so it says memory usage is not available so it has gone with working set or if you want to sort by private memory size you can use this one looks good okay let's try out another one in this next one i'm going to go with haskell let's run it and it takes its sweet time to return the response instead of just uh, producing it immediately so the for the haskell one i am asking it to create a haskell data type to represent a binary tree and implement a function to traverse it okay so there you go so there is a haskell representation and this is the data type which it has defined and from there it is describing it and then also telling us that this function uses pattern matching to handle the two construction of the tree data type and then it is also telling us this is example of how you can create the tree and then also the output amazing stuff very very nice i think it's a very good quality model so far okay let's try out now sql query because that is a very common use case so I'm asking you to create a SQL query to find all orders placed by customers from US using the orders and customer tables. Let's see. And there you go. So in this one, it is, look at that reasoning. So it is saying, assuming you have a country field in customer and order ID in the orders. And then it is doing the inner join on both of the tables and also putting a predicate of customers.country USA. Amazing stuff. Amazing. Okay, let's try out one of my favorite features in G so far, which is that it can create Docker file. So I'm asking it to create a Docker file for a Python Flask app with Redis dependency. It's a memory data store. Redis so very commonly used in some of the serverless applications. So let's wait for it to create a Docker file to see how it goes. And there you go. It has produced a Docker file. Took like five minutes to produce it anyway, but look at this. So it is just going layer by layer. It is just getting Python 3.7 slim. Amazing. Very good to keep it light. And then there's a parent image and then it is going into the work directory, adding it. And then it is just, sorry, it is just installing all the requirements and then making the port 80 available. And then it is doing the CMD. And then also it is giving us this uh, flask app in the app.py which we so all in all it has given us everything and also the command to run this how good is that loving it i think this is my favorite feature here so let me try one more if you don't mind i'm just going to instead of telling it to create a docker file i'm just going to ask it build a docker image for a simple static website using nginx which can be used as a web server or reverse proxy so let's wait for it and there you go and look at this response it is telling us that here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a docker image for a simple static website and then this is a docker file getting the nginx latest uh, image as a parent setting up the worker directory then copy the static website exposing it at port 80 and then running the container how good is that this is simply lovely amazing stuff okay towards the end let me show you that it supports one more uh, language there are many languages but i can't cover all 52 of them so let's go with the last one i'm asking it to implement a simple 
एंड गेट यूजिंग वेरी लॉग वेरी लॉग इज़ अ हार्डवेयर डिस्क्रिप्शन लैंग्वेज और हेच टी एल विच इज़ यूज टू मॉडल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सिस्टम सो यू नो द और एंड 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 एक्सक्लूसिव और गेट्स इन द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किटरी दैट इज़ वट इट इज़ यूज फॉर सो लेट्स ही हाउ इट इम्प्लीमेंट्स दिस लेट्स वेट फॉर इट एंड देर यू गो सो इट हैज़ गिवन एस अ सिंपल इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ एंड गेट देर यू गो गुड स्टाफ yes it works on modules and then this it is also explaining what happened here and then how it can be used amazing stuff and it it's even given us a test bench for this how good is that anyway very impressive model i think under 10 billion model one of the best if not the best model so far and the stand out thing is that it supports docker files and lot of other languages which are not really supported by even the top of models there i have checked it with mistral's code stroll and few others which are at the top of the line at the moment but none of them has uh, this sort of capability for the slightly lesser known languages plus powershell and then haskell and then uh, especially the docker file it also supports many other languages so go check it out i will drop the link to it in video description if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching